As I mentioned in the beginning of the service, for the last two weeks, we've taken a break from our sermon series, O oh, for a Faith, to focus on missions. Well, today we're returning back to the sermon series, O oh, for a Faith, and we're going to look closely at Luke chapter 11. So I don't know if many of you brought your own Bibles, but if you have your own Bible app, those of you who are online, you can open up your Bibles or your Bible app. Look up Luke chapter 11 as we'll go along through that today and dig a little deeper. The phone rings at midnight. What's your initial reaction? So let's give this phone call at midnight a little context. You're a parent or a grandparent who's responsible for a teenage daughter or a teenage son, and they're out. The phone rings at midnight. Maybe you're in college, and you're studying for that big test. I know, you usually don't go to bed before midnight at college, so that's why I thought this would be a good illustration. And you're studying, and you get that knock on the door or the call, and your friends want to go out. Maybe when you're home, it's not the phone, but it's a knock on the door at your front door at home at midnight. Or maybe you're a child sleeping, and in the middle of your sleep, your sibling comes and opens your door and knocks on the door and wakes you up. What do you do? How do you react? In both these situations, I think we'd be shocked. As I was laying in bed last night, it's weird how you hear every single little noise. So I was laying there and I heard a little ruffle. And I was like, did I lock all the doors? Did I make sure all the windows are shut? And you go through that whole list and the same thing happens when the phone rings. What happened now? Many of us would probably fear the worst in situations like these, because it just doesn't happen on a regular basis. And some of us might even be angry and say, go away. Stop calling me at this time of the day. Stop knocking on my door. But they won't. They keep calling. They keep knocking. They're not going away. So what do you do? Jesus says, if they keep on pounding or knocking on the door and they keep on calling, Jesus says, even if frustration and anger have set in, you're going to answer that phone call. You're going to open the door because of their persistence and boldness. There are many times when it feels that God isn't answering your prayers isn't it? it? Aren't there many times like that? It seems we knock on God's door constantly. We pray and we call out. We ask him to bless us and we wait for an answer. But we don't see anything happening. Or we don't hear anything. And it's at these moments that we get tired frustrated, and want to give up because we're convinced that God doesn't want to answer or that he's got somebody else with a much bigger problem that he's dealing with and he doesn't care about ours. He must not want to listen to us today. Today, in the Gospel of Luke, of chapter 11, we see and we hear the Lord Jesus teaching us to pray. Not only does he give us the content to pray, but he also gives us the confidence to pray. Today, Jesus tells us to knock on the Lord's door in prayer. And don't stop knocking. Be bold and be persistent when we're knocking on his door. Don't take no for an answer, Jesus says. 
not giving up on receiving an answer from God may seem like an eternity. It may seem like God doesn't care. You may wonder if it's even worth it to continue in asking God for help. That's why today our prayer is, O oh, for a faith that doesn't take no for an answer. Have you ever felt like you were on the other side of that midnight call? You know, you were the one making the phone call to your parents at midnight. You were the one knocking on a friend's door at midnight. Think about that in the context of prayer and you calling on God. Sometimes you just sense that you're bugging him. God must really be annoyed with me. Sometimes you might feel that God's just sick of you asking him the same thing over and over again. Sometimes you realize that maybe it was just not the right time to talk with him. Don't you ever feel this way? I know I have. And then you even wonder to yourself if you're even saying the right things, praying the right prayer, using the right words, or asking the right questions. And then we see Jesus praying. And the disciples saw Jesus praying on countless occasions. Many times they were there as a support system for him. Jesus needed a break, so he would go off to a quiet place, and the disciples were along for the ride. Other times, the disciples were there to keep watch from all the predators that were out there in the night, to keep protected and to remove any distraction so it wouldn't disturb Jesus from his prayer. And then there were even other times when Jesus was praying, and he says, pray with me. And often when we see the disciples praying with him, they become weary and fall asleep, don't they? Prayer was a regular part of Jesus' life. He prayed in the heat of the day, in the darkness of the night, and even in the dire of distress in his life. There wasn't a wrong time for Jesus to pray. There wasn't a wrong emotional state to be in when he was praying. He prayed at all times and in every single emotional state. He was teaching us that we too can pray at all times and in every state that we're in. Anger all the way to joyfulness. And the disciples saw the blessings of Jesus' prayer life. And they wanted to be a part of it. So the disciples wanted to know the right way on how to pray. They heard Jesus pray many times, but they wanted some type of guideline, an outline. And as we pray in frustration many times and we don't feel like God's listening to us, don't we kind of want the right way to pray too from Jesus? We want him to tell us how we can pray so that we know he's listening to us and hearing us. And Jesus says in Luke chapter 11, verse 3 and following, he says, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. We call this the Lord's Prayer. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, has given us some exact words to pray. In the Gospel account, it's a little bit more extensive, the prayer that's included here. And that's what we typically pray regularly. And that's the reason why we pray it every single Sunday. Because this was specifically the prayer that the Lord told us to pray. Almost every single night, we pray it with our children. This prayer is directly from the Lord. 
What a blessing for the disciples to receive this answer to their question. Lord, teach us to pray. And he gives a specific prayer to pray. Is this the only prayer that we are to pray? Of course not. Because Jesus didn't just repeat this prayer over and over in his prayers. He prayed for hours on end. And so we know that there's much more that we can pray. Now we have a direct example, though, of prayer that we can start with. That's from Jesus himself. And then we're able to add on to this prayer and feel more comfortable in the words that we say and pray. But Jesus didn't stop there after he gave them the Lord's Prayer. He continued on and he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and he goes to him at midnight and says, friend, lend me three loaves of bread because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have nothing to set before him. Could you imagine having a friend knock on your door at midnight asking for help with food to provide for their guest? It doesn't happen maybe nearly as often, but I think the point is very valid here. Then the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. Jesus then responds, I tell you though, he will not get up and give him be- br- the bread because he is his friend. Yet because of the man's boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. Is Jesus advocating us to be annoying? Obviously not. He doesn't want us to burn bridges with friends. But I tell you that if I knock on a friend's door in the middle of the night asking for bread or some food and my friend wasn't irritated with me, I'd be surprised. (laughs) Jesus isn't encouraging us to be annoying. So Jesus says, I say to you, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. God the Father is not annoyed with boldness and persistence. In fact, Jesus encourages us to be both. It's not annoying, but it's bold, and it's persistent. When we are bold and persistent in our prayers to God, he will answer. Be bold in your prayers, dear friends. Be persistent in what you ask God for. Look at the example Abraham gives us. You can recall that Abraham and his nephew Lot were looking over the promised land And Abraham said, you choose which portion you want. And Lot chose the very fertile area where it seemed very easy to grow crops and raise the herds and cattle. But eventually, that area was filled with so much sin, that was the area of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. So later in life, Abraham prayed for that city, Sodom and Gomorrah, because God wanted to destroy that city because they were all turning their back on the Lord and not following him. Abraham prayed because he wanted Lot to be saved. He didn't want him to be killed. And Abraham prayed over and over again to have mercy on that city. And as I reviewed that account, I counted six times that Abraham prayed to God. Now that's just what's recorded. Maybe there was more. First, Abraham Ask God, basically, it's like he calls him down to be there and look over the city with him, and he calls him to the battlefield. And he says to God, would you really destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, this city, if there are 50 righteous people who live there? Now, Abraham pretty much knew that there wasn't even close to 50 righteous people there. But he thought he would probably ask with a less bold of a question. So he asked the 50 because he didn't want any judgment on that city. And then look at the next thing that Abraham says to God. It's not like he's asking God anything, but he holds God to his mercy. And he says this to God, far be it from you, God, for you to cast any judgment on your people. 
Can you get more bold than that in prayer? Far be it, Lord, that you cast judgment on your people. And then from there, he works down from the 50 people, down to 40, down to 30, down to 20, and then down to 10. Pretty amazing boldness and persistence in prayer we witnessed from Abraham. And then we know the story. There was even less than 10. But God still spared Lot and his family from that destruction, even though it was less than the 10. And then we have another section of scripture where we see another bold prayer. We have the example of Elijah. Elijah was just done with the people of Israel. They had turned their backs on God so much and didn't listen to Elijah anymore. And so Elijah was ready to just be done with them. And so Elijah prays to God and says, Lord, please send a drought on the land. Don't send any rain. You know what? The Lord answered that prayer and for three and a half years, they did not receive one single drop of rain. Sometimes I feel like that's what somebody prayed here in West Texas. But then, after three and a half years, Elijah boldly prays to the Lord, and he says, Lord, our people are sorry, and repented for them and confessed on the behalf of the Israelites and asked the Lord to send rain once again. And it was almost immediate where he saw this little dark cloud in the sky where there were no clouds for three and a half years, all of a sudden this dark cloud forms and it starts getting bigger and bigger and rain comes to the land. Wow. Boldness. Persistence. And then we see our example from our first lesson today. Solomon, right? We don't see any persistence there. He didn't have to have persistence because God said, ask for whatever you need and I'll give it to you. But Solomon, Solomon in his faith and in his earthly wisdom said, Lord, I don't know how to govern the people. I'm supposed to be in charge of all these people, your people, but I don't know how to do it right. Please give me a discerning heart. When he could have asked for wealth, he could have asked for many other things that could have set him for his life. He was bold in asking for wisdom. And God gave it to him. And he gave him much more on top of it. Oh, for a faith that doesn't take no for an answer. God has made sure that these three examples are recorded for us so that we follow their example. There's many more examples of prayer that we could pick and choose from in the Bible. Jesus said these things right to them as they asked and teach us how to pray and had them recorded for us so that we and the disciples could be confident in prayer. Jesus is telling us to knock on the Lord's day in prayer and he will answer. Have the faith that doesn't take no for an answer. And we know God the Father will hear us and answer our prayers. Look what Jesus says next. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? What more can we say? God the Father loves us because we are his children. He loves you. He loves you so much more than any earthly father and hears everything that you ask in his name and gives you every blessing that you need. If God answers your prayer, he is increasing your faith. If he delays... He is increasing your patience. If he doesn't answer at that moment, he has something better for you. 
When you pray, God hears more than you say. Answers more than you ask. Gives more than you can imagine. In his own time. And in his own way. He gives the gift of the Holy Spirit to his children. And your baptism is when the Holy Spirit came into your hearts and your lives and you became God's children. And as his children, he loves and cares for you more than any earthly father ever will. Jesus tells you today to knock on the Lord's day in prayer as his child. Keep knocking. He will hear you. He will answer you. He will give good gifts to you. He will send his Holy Spirit to bless your life. Take everything to the Lord in prayer. Ask him. Seek him. And knock, dear friends. Keep knocking. And do not take no for an answer. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. The Lord be with you. Amen.